All right. So I think, you know, few things are clear, right? That, uh, you know, these uh, LLMs have been given this task to develop some model that you can trade on, you know, few assets. Um, and then you can see how and what they're doing right now, right? So a few very correlated set of trades, I'm assuming, in the initial half between few of them. And in the later half between a couple of them as well, this has a very high correlation and probably this has a very high correlation. You know, these two have a very high correlation as well. So, you know, they, they are learning on some, you know, um, kind of few public, um, you know, ideas which they are generally deploying. Um, obviously, the ideas may differ between a cluster of those LLMs, but, you know, maybe for a couple of them, they are deploying something similar. Um, you know, generated from some sort of public ideas. Drawdowns are huge, as Sagar pointed out. Uh, in a matter of few days, we can see that drawdowns have been, you know, like almost like 20, 30, 40, 50, and even to the extent that there was 80% drawdown, right? So quite unacceptable in, you know, like uh, for professional trading. Um, the diversification benefits are not being taken into account. Um, you know, if I... Look at the chats that are going on on X and other social media. I was, you know, looking around and people were saying that, oh, you know, Quen3 is uh, actually, you know, cannot believe it. They, it has done a fabulous job. Um, you know, all sorts of praise around that. But if I look at the trades that Quen is doing, right, so I would probably rank it very low um, among these because they still have a thesis, right? And I'm not saying that the trades by Quen does not have thesis. Um, ultimately, you know, you cannot derive much alpha from just price and volume data that is available for everybody to consume because there's limited alpha on one asset, one strategy. When you look at, you know, a given data set, right? Because everybody is reacting to that, you know, people all over the world with trillions of dollars being traded every day, they're all reacting to the same thing. It's not possible to achieve, you know, 5x return or 20x return in a year. If that is happening, and we had seen that Excel sheet simulation, right? Monte Carlo simulation that I did, that you know the the actual strategies which have very low sharp can actually generate 20x in a year, and it can lose like you know not just 100 percent but 5,000 percent in another year, right? Because there's no consistency. The volatility part in chart talks about what is the consistency of your returns. And that consistency, you know, the volatility, volatility very closely linked to between assets, you know, when you look around the whole picture of portfolio, it also talks about the correlation effects, the diversification benefit. Most of the winning trades or the money that Quen3 has made is right now purely based on luck because it has very concentrated bets on BTC, right? Um, I think it realized uh, almost, I don't know, like close to $7,000 uh, PNL on BTC. And that's how it is much other, uh, further ahead of, you know, other LLMs. Now, how long can that go on? Because you, there's on one asset, you know, putting all your eggs in the same basket, having super high leverage trades, you know, 25x levered right now in BTC alone. There's no other diversification, right? That that can get you a huge amount of profit in one scenario and the other scenario it will give you a huge amount of loss. The volatility of those returns will be very high. If wall is high and ultimately by weak law of large numbers, you are, you know, close to similar PNL with other people, then your sharp is actually really low, right? So Quen3, I would say, I would probably rank it one of the bottom ones, which is presently trading at top, just because of looking at the trades that it is doing. Um, I was also looking at, you know, the model chat. And very frequently, I found out that, you know, they are basically trading on, let's say, RSI values, um, overfit level of, uh, you know, uh, stop losses, take profit. Um, a lot of them were actually talking about MACD and stuff like that. Now, you know, if you if you go to a quant interview, right, um, and imagine, you know, the, these firms paying you in the US somewhere around 200K dollars as your starting salary, as your first job, they're hiring a quant. Do you think mentioning MACD and RSI will get you the job when, you know, any anybody anywhere can just pick up this RSI and MACD and probably create a strategy. Not really, right? Nobody's going to pay 200K dollars for that because it does not work, right? All of those things does not work. And if you look through the chat, this is what they have been discussing about that my strategy is based on this. I'm seeing this and that. This is what the retail, I mean, it's a very good simulation and actually not simulation, but, you know, live trading, real live trading of what retail traders do. So obviously one side of the outlier is they just lose money quickly and, you know, close their book. Maybe not even close their book, then they borrow more money or take more money and again, make another loss and they keep doing this, right? So this is one of the scenarios. 
other scenarios is the people who belong in probably this group, right? Most likely Q3 who are like, this is how money is made. I now know this is how trading is done because I made money, right? In the last X number of days or weeks or months by concentrating all their positions into one asset. Till the time they're winning, the more you tell them that this is the wrong way of doing trading because your wall is very high, right? Your drawdown is also high and your wall is in general high. You are leverage beta to, you know, Bitcoin as long as it goes up or any other asset that you trade all eggs in your same basket in the same basket and you know super high leverage position that you're taking the moment it drops you know something like what what we saw um last to last Friday if that happens this will be the first to go to zero right just because of such a high leverage so you know all of those uh you know um relates to the point that essentially this is the other half of maybe the or maybe not even the half but like another percentile of um, retail traders who initially win because of luck, right? And then they think that, you know, this is how trading is done. And the more you try to tell them that, you know, you have to keep your wall low. If your volatility is low, right? If Let's say if your annual volatility is 4% versus, versus 12%, right? Your probability of hitting a higher max drawdown is much lower when your wall itself is 4% compared to 12% because your strategy cannot or is not expected to have that high swings on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on an annual basis, all of that is very much protected, right? So you cannot have a very high drawdown, right? And when your wall is so high that you put all your eggs in the same basket and you're taking such high leverage bets on the same asset and you're making PNL right now just because you're lucky, that wall will come into play sometime that you're up $8,000, next moment you'll be down $8,000, right? So it's a very risky trade scenario that I've seen with Quen3. All other uh, LLMs are actually taking some sort of, you know, balanced bets. I would actually put, um, you know, I've seen some deep seek um, trades. I think still much better. I think probably the best one, I would say. Uh, this is where it is right now. So deep seek is probably out place as my favorite so far. Um, and even these two, right? Grok and um, Claude. I, I would say these three are probably the best. These, the other three, in my opinion, are probably not doing the right thing and it is a matter of time i think it does not run this thing does not run for a lot of time probably first week of number is when they close if i'm not wrong um if it was running longer then i would have loved to see where this goes i would presume that most of the, the way it is trading you know all of all of these llms i would probably not think that they will survive for long and most likely they will all go to zero all right just wanted to you know maybe touch upon this because this is quite popular right now people are watching what is going on and trying to understand whether or not the llms and ai models can come up with strategies um there's nothing new in what they're doing to be honest um so i wouldn't call this exactly you know a llm based model to trade because they are basically taking some public indicators and stuff and we can see the result of that four of them kind of underperforming just buy and hold right so and two of them among the two of them which are winning one has like a very weird format of running things which can subside anytime um we should not just a reminder we should not train these llms with any of our strategy we don't want our strategies to become that public data on which money cannot be made uh, so just be careful that you do not upload your strategies ideations ideas and you do not publish on github and your know, public githubs and everybody to see not just llms and stuff just a you know quick reminder it seems like these you know the other quants obviously knowing this that you know, sharing your code on these LLMs will render their ideations in the long term quite useless because LLMs are currently public mostly, and you know they they can their the idea that you feed to them is kind of being extracted at the other end by somebody else, right? So, um, I I also have you know kind of reinforced the faith that the quants out there, right, in every street and every city and everywhere in the you know entire world they at least are following the principle of not training these models because these models are doing pretty poorly. If they would have trained the models, then somehow by, you know, copying and pasting and sharing their ideas into these LLMs, then these LLMs would have probably done better trading and I would be more worried that LLMs might take over trading in the future, but I don't think that's happening. So this is the conclusion. I probably just wanted to discuss a bit.